Welcome back to the final episode of our series brought to you by Stafford Communications, a division of Premier. Throughout this journey, we've explored the essential pillars for building a thriving healthcare contact center, a strong team, the power of technology, and the cornerstone of quality. But excellence doesn't happen overnight. It requires constant commitment to improvement. Today, we'll delve into continuous improvement in analytics in the Healthcare Contact Center. Russ Onofrio is back with us um, to share his expertise. So Russ, continuous improvement is a crucial aspect of any thriving contact center. Um, how do you implement continuous improvement strategies in your organization? Yeah, thank you, CJ, for having me back. Um, continuous improvement is a mindset and is one of my strategic pillars that I go in with building and leading the, the, an organization. It's all driven by data and analytics. Uh, most organizations get into a specific pattern of conducting business. In most cases, it's fine. But when you start looking at uh, the reasons for poor experience, patient experience, uh, you start to uncover bad processes are probably the root cause of that. Uh, there are two reasons. First off, companies are built from the inside out meaning that they're built their processes what's easy for them. Um, they have to make sure that they are looking at it from the outside in, what the patient is. And there, it'll be a revolution sometimes when they say, uh, or really kind of an epiphany when they say, sorry, epiphany, um, when they realize what they do to the patients. The second thing is old, outdated processes. Um, you know, or a lack of technology or infrastructure that comes into play. The knowledge, is, knowledge approach is tribal, meaning that shoulder to shoulder type of stuff where you pass it along. Um, it's, it's one of the phrases I prefer never to hear uh, when it comes to, you know, it comes to processes. It's um, the way we're doing it is that's the way we've always done it. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's what a lot of established organizations come through. And that's kind of a recipe for inefficiency. Um, you should be reviewing your processes every six to 12 months. Just, they, they may be fine, but uh, just to make sure they're running soundly. You know, while healthcare is much different than other different industries, this is an area where they can really kind of learn from that and maybe take some of the best practices. Excellent. Um, so, of course, data is at the core of continuous improvement. You can't improve unless you can measure it. So, can you talk about leveraging data analytics um, for continuous improvement? Yeah, um, I guess what's the old saying? What gets measured gets done. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what I go back to. I, I have a degree in mathematics and I used to teach mathematics in high school. So, I gravitate more towards um, data analytics. You know, um, it, it, it's something that things should be tracked. Everything should be tracked, benchmarked. Not to the point where it's there, but just so that you're able to understand trends. Um, you really around continuous improvement is about identifying those areas to improve. For when you have high call volume, a specific hour, a specific day, a specific mm -hmm. um, period of time, really that analytics to, you know, to understand what may be driving that pattern. Okay. Tracking over time is critical, you know. All of your metrics, whether you call them KPIs, metrics, should be tracked and trended um, over time so that you have some historical perspective there. Um, and you can understand what is really good. Um, measuring continuous improvement initiatives. You know, so many times we do some great stuff in changes of processes, but we don't measure the before and after. You know, to understand really what that impact is mm -hmm. or what the next impact can be. Predictive analytics. You know, this is where technology and AI can come in, really predicting trends uh, in there. This is all part of that continuous improvement. Um, and then obviously real-time analytics. I mean, you know, the month-end report is always good, but what's happening real-time um, so that you're able to adjust, adapt, and overcome. Um, and then, as I mentioned, analytics, speech analytics, to understand really large data sets, um, to understand customer trends and um, patient um, calling behaviors or interaction behaviors. Uh, remember, the goal of any analytics is about improving the patient experience. Not, you know, it is about improving the patient experience um, and, and operational efficiency for the organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that we use that to gain valuable, valuable insights. Interesting, the connection between the analytics and staffing. 
um, at the most basic level, and, and there's such challenges with staffing in a healthcare contact center, mm -hmm. um, and everybody has the same problem. It happens on Monday, Tuesday, it drops off on the, the yeah. rest of the week, so yeah. um, using analytics for that purpose is basic. You, yeah. you absolutely have to do it. it. It's one of the biggest challenges when you run, it's like a sign curve. Mm -hmm. you, know, you start really high, so, and then you tail off. It's really understanding there, because it's hard to staff those, even with part-time people. Mm -hmm. really to staff those so it's important to understand that trend and make people aware outside because outside of your actual patient service center you can't assume they know what you know all right so they're only going to look at um, the numbers that come through so really education of your people of the of the staff the leadership team of that of those particular patterns mm -hmm. um, so can you uh, give us a specific example from your contact center and how analytics play a crucial role in identifying an issue and mm -hmm. how to solve it. Yeah, I'm going I'm to give you, if we have time, I'll give you three examples. Um, we have, first of all, first of all, it was around, um, you know, what we were just talking about is, is the actual sign curve of calls that come through or patient needs on Monday, Tuesday, as I mentioned mm -hmm. before, Monday was like 28%. We tabled off to about 18% on Friday. That's a huge sign. So, you know, when we tried to staff for that, and even with part-time people, it was a struggle. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, one of the groups I had were, was pretty low. You know, we're talking 40s, 30s, service level. And that's the repeat cycle, payments, more calls coming in. So what we implemented was a callback assist technology, where instead of waiting, we can actually have um, patients put in their number, right. call back, Mm -hmm. when it's convenient with them or schedule a time back. Um, you know, I was a little skeptical about that because again, it, was there, it wasn't about improving service, it was about leveling it out. So it makes it better. And then putting control with the patient and giving them control instead of having to wait and hear that music or hanging up and calling back again. Um, we, saw that we saw a dramatic improvement. We also had feedback in our surveys for our patients that they liked it. You know, they, they didn't like waiting but they would prefer that than waiting longer. So mm -hmm. um, that was great. And we got up into the, like the 70s on a Monday, which is palatable for, you know, 28% of your 100% volume. Um, the second example was around, um, I call it the nurse triage line we, we, we implemented. Um, we sat down, one of the biggest things, and this is probably common in most um, healthcare call centers, is that um, a patient will call in, schedule appointment, and because of the appointment needs clinical interaction, it gets you know, swivel chaired over to the, the office or a nurse pool. And most of that time is done through maybe an email because the nurse, nurses in offices, they're, they're handling day-to-day -day stuff that comes through and then they get back to them. And sometimes they don't get back to the patient in a timely fashion and they call back. And these are for people who are sick, need to be seen mm -hmm. the same day. And a, and a lay person who's non-clinical cannot really say, should they be seen like right now, one hour, one day, one week. That needs clinical intervention. So I met and we did a brainstorming session with the with some of our, our chief of uh, provider services or CMO, uh, a couple of lead physicians or head of, of, of clinical operations and we came up with the nurse triage line. Um, so instead of patients coming to the patient the, the, the service center, they would go directly to a nurse and we manned it the same way we manned it the, um, the regular service center. Um, we tracked the numbers in there and what we saw was a 10% reduction in call volume in the service center because of repeat callers mm -hmm. and coming through. And yeah, the patients great. loved it. They were willing to wait and what we did that was really great is we had a backup team because you know in the offices there's only a couple of nurses and everyone wants to speak to their office nurse but we also had a team of nurses as an overflow capability who were doing other things but were manning calls. So that was the second one on that. Um, so, and the third one, we, it was back in the old days when I was with VNS Health. Um, in that time, texting wasn't really there. This is over 10 years ago. And about 30% of our call volume were patients calling in saying, when is my scheduled appointment? We had a lot of elderly patients, sometimes they didn't, the nurse would always leave something there, they couldn't find it. Um, so we put in an outbound, proactive outbound program, is that we would call people like the cable company used to do when they used to go installations, is they'd call the day before, 
or six hours before, and we started doing proactive cut to remind them that someone was coming. And, you know, it was a short call. We did uh, a survey capability, patients love it, and we reduced volume in the call center by 15%. Wow, okay. Um, in order to improve, you need a motivated team. You can't say we're gonna, going to change and everybody changes. So you need, you need a motivated team. Um, how uh, can you ensure that your team is going to go along with you as you know when you try to improve something? And yeah, I think it has to be the heart of your operation. It's really got to be part of your core that coming in. It's about help having people have uh, say in what they're what they can do. You know, this is not about, and again, this is about, we talked a lot about it over the last several sessions, culture here, mm -hmm. so that people are feeling vested that they have a say in the work they're doing. Um, and that's really critical. And that's where you get the best ideas that come through, is, you know, people saying, hey, this is not working out. I'm getting this many calls. Um, mm -hmm. So two examples of that is that we put in uh, a CRM rudimentary CRM for it for that um, and when building the CRM we actually had ages I wish I had done this because this was one of my managers doing that and I, I have to commend her for that um, she actually said well let's get a couple agents to design the screens where are their eyes going what hyperlinks they want to get to other avenues there because they don't have to scroll through screen through screen through screen um, and that really fosters that they gave some great insight that was able to reduce handle time and the agents the other agents loved it um, the second one was we, we put in some middleware to link uh, our electronic hospital records to our phone system so we got screen pops mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the tech it's support on that because there was always upgrades and challenges we had an agent who was responsible for, with the management team, also interfacing during, you know, upgrades, tech support issues. So buying into how do we get better as an organization and having people being part, having them have piece of, a piece of the rock. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna comment that, you, you know, your people always have the answers. If you ask your people what the issues are, they will tell you exactly what the issues are. And if you listen to them, they will, you know, you can springboard from there. But I agree that when you include people, you're way ahead and, and you have buy-in. Yeah, there's a, there's a saying that I always, I always say, and sometimes people kind of um, think it's not very leadership-like. I don't have all the answers and sometimes I don't know the questions. Mm -hmm. I rely on the people around you to help me out. And in leadership, what you're talking about is about surrounding you with people. Well, you're leading 150, 200 people. You're surrounded. Day to day, they are interacting. They know things are unusual. Give them a voice. Sometimes you can fix it. Nah, sometimes you can't. But at least they have a voice in that. Mm -hmm. So um, building a culture of continuous improvement and leveraging data analytics can be a, a game changer in healthcare call centers. Um, so as we wrap up the series, uh, Russ, what are the two or three key pieces of, of advice that you would give um, to other healthcare call center leaders um, looking to improve practices in their um, contact center? Yeah, I, I go back to my old high school mathematics teacher, Mr. Landers, play with your numbers. You know, and, you know it's, it's funny because the numbers tell you, don't live in the moment. You know, stuff happens in the moment. You know, trend, analyze, and really, it's it's this three-letter word called why. Know your why. Um, both good and not good, because when you're not good, and you know you're good, you get to course correct a lot easier. Um, I give you an example. I had a, a VP. Um, you know, we're, we had like several months of really, really superior performance hit all the metrics, things were getting happy, um, and then we, we hit a slide, okay, stuff happens. You know, and the individual came in and sent me an email and said, oh, this is a bad month, well, they only look at one month, and she said, what are we gonna do to course correct? So I sent, sent you know, I could spend some time, I said, okay, well, here's what's happened. Okay, we got 20% more call volume. And then going back to asking people and getting feedback from people, you want to know why? The office had sent out letters to patients that increased call volume. So you know, there's, there's always a reason why. And I think that's important to leave with people. Um, and then we re recovered from there. Uh, regularly review your processes. You know, give, 
give that processes the good housekeeping seal approval. They may be fine, but don't fall into the old adage of the way, that's the way we've always done it. Um, it. It's just not a recipe for efficiency. Right, and I agree with you at least once a year, mm -hmm. at least in this environment. Mm -hmm. So um, you've given us great advice. You've given us, um, you know, your insights on the power of continuous improvement and using data analytics in the healthcare contact center. Um, throughout this series, we've explored the essential pillars for building a thriving uh, healthcare contact center, creating a solid team, leveraging technology, ensuring quality, and fostering a culture of continuous improvement. So by investing in these pillars, you can create a healthcare contact center that delivers exceptional patient experiences, empowers your agents, agents and achieves operational excellence. We hope this series has equipped you with valuable strategies and practical takeaways to elevate your healthcare contact center. So feel free to contact us at, at Stafford Communications, uh, Premier, and of course, Russ Onofrio. Contact any one of us and we'll help you identify areas for improvement um, and develop customized strategies to deliver exceptional uh, patient experiences in your contact center. Thanks, Russ Onofrio, for joining us throughout the series and to all of you for tuning in. Thank you, CJ. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> it has. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>